you <coughs> fall where at? Uh, uh, you both served in the Aquino Yes, cabinet. I served the full with uh, Cory, uh, uh -oh, President uh -oh. Cory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I served with President Cory from the very start. Mm -hmm. I was appointed under secretary mm -hmm. uh, March 1986. Oh, uh -oh. And I, I was all set to leave uh, in uh, June 1992. Mm, mm. So I was under secretary for mm. the longest time. Right. And then I became secretary mm -hmm. uh, January 1992. Mm -hmm. And I was all set to leave. I was mm. all packed. Oh. All the goodbye parties mm. have been said. Oh. And then I get this call from mm -hmm. FDR's office mm -hmm. to say that he was appointing me as secretary of tourism, which was a big shock. He wanted to retain you. He wanted to retain me mm -hmm. because um, <laughs> the person that they had identified mm -hmm. to be secretary, mm -hmm. uh, they after vetting that person, didn't turn out okay. Oh, so okay. <laughs> it was a very last minute thing. Oh, oh, oh. So I was very flabbergasted because oh. uh, I didn't know you how long set. I was going to stay. Mm, mm. I, I mean, my mind was all psyched up to go back to the private sector oh. where I really came from. Yeah, yeah. And all my things were packed. Mm -hmm. There's 10 goodbye parties. No everything. intention of really staying no, another no. day no, <laughs> after June no, 30. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh. So, of course, like an obedient citizen, mm. I said, all right, I will stay, but mm -hmm. on the condition that this is only really temporary. Oh, who did you speak with? Who, who I contacted think it you? might have been Bobby Dio. There was a transition committee, ah, okay. so it's either Bobby Dio Campo mm -hmm. or um, one of those in the transition, the head of the transition okay. committee. I remember they were meeting at DBP mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I said, for how long? Mm -hmm. We don't know, just stay there. So like a good soldier, I, mm -hmm. I said, no option to decline. No, no option to decline. <laughs> so there I found myself in the FDR cabinet mm -hmm. and he always referred to me as his first secretary of tourism. Mm -hmm. So uh, the weeks went by and mm -hmm. there was no sign of me letting being let off. Mm -hmm. So finally one cabinet meeting, mm -hmm. I said, sir, may I talk to you? I said, um, when are you going to replace me? Mm -hmm. so when was this? Maybe uh, June, July, August, August, oh, 1992. Not, too, no. not, oh, not yet the 100 days. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so, um, and his first question, bakit ka nagmamadali? <laughs> so I said, sir, let me explain to you. <laughs> I said, you know, I got married in February to a tourism consultant mm -hmm. from Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. And he left his practice in Sydney. He closed mm -hmm. down his consulting practice because he was going to live here and mm -hmm. we were going to start a consulting mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. after my six month uh, period. There's a prohibition period uh, for six months. You cannot go into the industry that you, Where you regulate. Where you previously served. Yeah. yeah, that you previously mm -hmm. regulated. Mm -hmm. So it's all been mapped out. So he's here twiddling his thumbs. He can't work. <laughs> Because I'm Secretary of Tourism. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was still delicadeza. Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, poor man, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we, what's he going to do? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So he said, eh, sino kapalit? I said, sir, I said, I don't know. <laughs> eh, maghanap ka ng kapalit mo. Until such time that we agree on your replacement, mm -hmm. I will not let you go. Uh, okay, so he, he made it your problem. <laughs> he made it my problem. <laughs> Not his. Because <laughs> um, I, I think he, he had so many things on his mind. He really wasn't thinking of mm. searching. Mm -hmm. Because you know mm -hmm. how it is the first few months. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I made a half-hearted effort to look. <laughs> and uh, some people presented themselves and I just gave the names to him. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, 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 I will skip that part. Mm -hmm. um, because um, then the next meeting, also in the same little room outside the uh, cabinet meeting, mm -hmm. I said, sir, if you decide on the names I submitted to you or if you have other names, yeah. I will be ready to go anytime. Just let me know uh, <laughs> when you want to make the announcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you're typical FDR. Okay, I'll let you go. 
but you can ask me three things and I will give it to you. Parang genie. <laughs> oh, I said really? <laughs> I have exactly three things I want you I want I want to ask from you. All right. Number one, mm -hmm. I said please adopt the 20 year tourism master plan which I was responsible for. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. under secretary for planning and policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was the project director yes, of that yes. plan, which yeah. um, was up to 2010. Mm -hmm. And it was the first ever tourism master plan mm -hmm. for the Philippines. That's how I met my husband, by the way. He was, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> he, he was the <laughs> chief technical advisor of the UN World Tourism Organization. Oh, okay. So we were thrown together doing that plan. <laughs> so um, I said, please adopt it because it's a very good and comprehensive plan mm -hmm. for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I said, in that plan, the biggest and most important policy recommendation is to deregulate the <laughs> civil aviation industry because as long as Philippine Airlines has the monopoly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, our, uh, of our air space, mm -hmm. you can never open up yeah. for tourism or trade. Mm -hmm. So we have to break up the monopoly of PAL. We mm -hmm. have to deregulate. Mm -hmm. And number three, mm -hmm. I said, to do that, you have to reorganize the Civil Aeronautics Board mm -hmm. because it is held captive by PAL. I was very open with him. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, is that so? So do you have people in mind for the CAB? Yes, sir, that one I have. <laughs> so I said, I have two names from the private sector. Uh, Victor Limlingan ah. and Jose Claro Tito Tesoro. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that during the cabinet meetings, my seatmate was always Sunny Garcia, who was the OTC That's secretary. The yeah. mm. So he said, okay, you have your three wishes. Talk to Sunny. So I, I talked to Sunny and I said, Sunny, these are the names I gave to the president. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, to reorganize the CAB, mm -hmm. to make it more... To less to, to, to not to make it captive of PAL, mm -hmm. but to really work for the national interest. Yeah. Yeah. And these are the two names. Oh, he said, I know both of them very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and they're fine with me. Yeah. I can work with them. Mm -hmm. So immediately they were appointed. And that's one thing I can say about FDR. No, uh, when you when he says something, there's follow through. Okay. It's very very efficient. Uh, he takes everything down. Part of the work style, I know. Part of the work style, the complete staff work, mm -hmm. but he, he, he really follows through. <laughs> okay. And this is one thing I appreciated him for because mm -hmm. I, I had worked six years with Mrs. Aquino. And yeah. uh, well, the, the environment then was very different. We were too busy fending off attempted coup d'etat. Cool you yeah. know, and, and President Corey was a very intuitive kind of leader. Mm -hmm. FVR is very logical, yeah. more like yeah. my style. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's why we got on well. So um, the, the CAB was reorganized. Tito and Vic uh, were placed there. And uh, we started um, planning out how this deregulation would take place. Mm -hmm. After I had left the cabinet, I think it was October already when I left. After the plan. very short, after short the hundred days, oh, oh. after the hundred days, mm -hmm. which uh, I mentioned to you earlier, mm -hmm. I anchored and it's <laughs> in the CD. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I left, mm -hmm. and in early 1993, I received a call from uh, Secretary Almonte. Mm -hmm. He called me to his office in Quezon City, mm -hmm. where the National Security Office yeah, was, yeah. and he said. Well, FBR has given the orders to deregulate the transportation, the air transportation sector. Mm. Mm. You know, we're also doing it for telecoms. Yeah. Oh. But for the air transportation, we need the private sector and we want you to lead it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I said, fine. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. been my advocacy. The tourism master plan will never get implemented unless we open up the skies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm very willing to do it. He never really let go of you then. No, no, he never really let go. Uh, and in fact, there were other things that, um, well, I'll tell it later. No? Sure, sure. Go ahead. So, um, knowing that it was Joe, I, I knew then that it was FVR yeah. on top of it, mm. and that it had 
the strategy had to be well crafted because you were dealing with strategists here. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, since I had credibility with our private sector, we gathered all the associations mm -hmm. together. And the monopoly that was in entrenched for quite a long time. More than 50 years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> More than 50 right, years. Right, right. And it was a vicious fight. It mm. was a vicious fight that extended all the way to the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And we were pilloried in the Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so, um, so I said, this has to be a very well-crafted strategy. So we worked with the CAB. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, Which had two of your nominees. Yes, and, <laughs> and Sandy Garcia, yeah. of course. And then um, we worked with the tourism private sector, and I was just rereading the position paper that we put out, mm -hmm. signed by all the major mm -hmm. associations. Yes, yeah. And I just now realized how well crafted that strategy was because in the State of the Nation address in 1994, mm -hmm. So it took the time, huh? 1993 mm -hmm. was when Joe Almonte called a meeting mm -hmm. in his office yeah. and we started preparing. Yeah. And yeah. in 94, he announced in the State of the Nation address in July mm -hmm. that he is asking Congress to review the, the regulatory framework for transportation right. to um, deregulate de de air, sea, and land mm -hmm. transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the cue. Mm -hmm. And then um, a series of, well, I, I wrote a series of articles. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I used to contribute to uh, Business World yes. in a column called To Take a Stand. Mm -hmm. And I was just reviewing it there. And so everything that I said was in support of FBR's uh, policy. <laughs> and um, so uh, in 1995, mm -hmm. Executive Order 219, deregulating the air transport sector was signed yeah. by Executive Secretary Ginkona. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. That was when Cebu Pacific and all the other airlines Cebu Pacific, that, Grand Air, yes, yes, Asian were Spirit, able to yeah. were able to fly. The success was mostly in the domestic uh, sector yes, yes. for the low cost carriers. Mm -hmm. And a little bit on the foreign, but and that was a more difficult um, battle. Mm -hmm. What we were just asking was for flights to go direct to Cebu yeah. and to Davao. Some of the major gateways. Uh, right? Lawag. Mm -mm. Uh, at that time, Clark was still being uh, developed. developed mm -mm. But eventually, mm -hmm. you know, we, we wanted flights direct to Clark to bypass Manila because mm -hmm. already so then, it was, congested. it was already congested and we didn't have the... Um, Terminal 3 yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, no? Wala pa. Oh. Because it was so during FBR's time. So and still then, the old one. And there was a big delay because of uh, Piatco and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there was a big delay in the completion of Terminal 3. Terminal 3, right. Yeah, but that was sweet victory for us. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. wow, how we were uh, lambasted. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember covering a few of those hearings, actually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I you, know. Well, that, that was much later <laughs> on when, uh, in 1990, it was already during Arab's time, 1999, mm. when we formed Freedom to Fly Coalition. Yeah, right. Yeah. right that but before that, it was, I was really working within the mm. tourism industry mm -hmm. associations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, there, that, that was the, uh, for me, that was the legacy of um, President Ramos, which I am very grateful for. Mm -hmm. These are policies that people don't see. Mm -hmm. They just know that, wow, we now have low-cost carriers. We can now yeah. travel. Yeah, yeah. Tourism is booming, mm -hmm. you know, but they, they don't go. know at the back what place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make that happen. How it, how it all happened. Then. How it all happened, you mm -hmm. know. And one thing about FDR, he um, relied on the private sector. Mm -hmm. He really uh, said, Kayo's private sector, you have to help me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I guess that was one of the other talents that he had. I mean, understanding who to pick, <laughs> uh, which battles to choose. Yes. No? And then mobilizing, mobilizing all friendlies, yeah, and making and, and, them and all part of giving one support. Effort, no? 
we, we're there mobilizing, but he never left us. He, yeah. he, he was always there to support us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were, yeah, right, you were already private sector. I was already then, a no? private I citizen. Mean, I mean, how did it feel that you know that the president had your back? <laughs> I mean, well, I felt... Well, I mean, generally, that's something for for people directly under him. Ano? If you're in the public, uh, if you're in the public sector, alam mong supportado ka ng Pangulo, then you're good. But in your case, you were uh, already in private sector. Well, um, first, I was honored that I was asked <laughs> and, and that I could still continue helping mm. him mm. in my private capacity. Mm. Of course, it was a big um, risk as well mm. Mm. because uh, what if it failed? You know, yeah. but I knew that with him, everything was, everything was um, strategized and everything was well thought out Why up to so? the end. Why so? What made you think that? That what? what? The, with him, everything was strategized. Oh, he's a military man. You could see it in the <laughs> cabinet meetings, mm. you know, mm. that the way he, he uh, uh, put everybody to work mm -hmm. and everything had to you know, fall together in place. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He had this uh, Captain Arevalo for to me. Balong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who was so great because you, you give papers to him and they get acted on. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I had been in a past administration where you give papers and they get, they fall in the cracks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened, you know? Well, of course, po. we had a cabinet assistance system under Ping de Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, which was very, very efficient. Under uh, Mrs. Aquino. Under Mrs. Aquino, which mm -hmm. was very, very efficient. We had Ping and Chito Sobre Peña, mm -hmm. and that's where we got things threshed out. Mm -hmm. But this one was really military style, and um, I, I knew it was going to be a popular advocacy mm -hmm. because people sensed that airfares were high. There were no choices, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. The service was bad mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. a single airline, yeah. no competition. Mm -hmm. No choice. So, no, no so choice. it was it was a, uh, going to be a popular move, but we had put some. Um, safeguards in place mm, mm. but uh we woke up one day and uh the flights between taiwan and the philippines had been cut off mm -hmm. for no reason mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for some flimsy reason mm -hmm. the the flights were just suspended mm -hmm. so uh well you know why you know? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. taiwan was one of our biggest um, tourism markets uh, yeah. and the, trade the, the, yeah, visitor markets. arrivals, yeah. And, and trade, trade, yeah. So that's when um, a group of us decided to form Freedom to Fly Coalition. Mm -hmm. We put out uh, a statement. And I, I brought it all here. Mm -hmm. I think I should contribute it as part of his legacy, yeah, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, because of the pressure, mm -hmm. uh, those flights were resumed, but the damage was considerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Loss of confidence, no? Yeah, uh, right, change the, right, right. Change the rules in the middle of the ball game. Yeah, even Secretary Jem Macruz, who was secretary mm. at the time, mm. who was supporting yes. Freedom to yes. Fly Coalition, was brought to court mm -hmm. by PAL mm -hmm. for uh, uh, signing a um, marketing agreement with Singapore Airlines to oh, jointly right. market the, the, the Philippines. The Philippines, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I remember that. Yeah, too. so <laughs> vicious. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And though we were branded as, you know, pro-U.S. because mm -hmm. we were advocating for open skies with the U.S. Mm -hmm. and we were tools of the mm -hmm. U.S. government, mm -hmm. all sorts of nonsense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we weathered all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think today it's um, domestically no problem. I think uh, in terms of the um, international flights, it's a little bit more... Uh, Maluag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. But it all started really uh, with FBR, FBR in ano, no? 1992. 1992. Which he <laughs> announced in his uh, State of the Nation address in 1993. <laughs> na ano ba? Na, na niya yung ano? Na adapt niya yung master plan. Yes, that he you, did. That you uh, left with he him. He did. Um, Presidential Proclamation 188. Oh. Uh, adopting the tourism master plan as the blueprint for tourism development in mm -hmm. the Philippines. Mm -hmm. He is the only president who has done that. 
<laughs> because the Tourism Master Plan, Hold which on. expired in 2010, was succeeded by the National Tourism Development Plan yeah. of 2010-2016, mm -hmm. which is now ha has been updated 2016 to 2022. Mm -hmm. No president has formally adopted, or even NEDA, has saying, yes, this is the blueprint, and we will all uh, converge mm -hmm. with this. Mm -hmm. Wala. So uh, I had already left the cabinet when that proclamation um, was put out by FVR. So mm -hmm. I was very, very grateful. But the framework was yours. The framework was, the, the framework the was, well, I, I wouldn't say mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the so project the, director. The, the work, yeah. Huh. But uh, it, it was all the stakeholders mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. It was a very comprehensive um, master plan with consultations mm -hmm. all over the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but I felt it was my baby because. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> Your, yeah. your work uh, during Mrs. Aquino's term. Yes. You, you put it all together. Into correct, correct. Yeah. And if people ask me um, what was really accomplished, seems nothing, I said deregulating the civil aviation uh, uh, industry was one of the big policy recommendations of that plan, mm -hmm. and it has been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But these are the things that you don't really appreciate because you don't see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, Walang bang, ano? Walang bang. Walang bang. It's not like promoting, you know, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. abroad and promoting. Mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. No, but it, 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 because you're in policy work, that's why I was so interested when mm -hmm. you said you were in policy. Mm -hmm. These are the things that um, make lasting changes mm -hmm. because they're structural, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So you address the mm -hmm. institutional and the structural mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. In this case, a tourism master plan was... Vintage FBR. I mean, he had Philippines 2000. Diba? I mean, he, he's he's also an engineer. Yes. Diba? yes. So he likes systems. he likes process. He likes systems. Yes. He likes you know a methodology methodology to it. You know? Yes. Uh, logical steps leading to a set goal. Yes, no? correct. That was very him. Yes, correct. Vintage. <laughs> No. Vintage FVR. That's one thing that I'll always fondly and respectfully remember him mm. for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a joy working with him, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let, 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 I, I'm sorry, let me get back a few years before... Uh, so, so you both were in the Aquino administration. He... Chief of Staff. No? Yes, right correct. After, right after Mrs. Aquino took her oath. I think the first order was to appoint him <laughs> Correct. verbally as chief of staff of the new armed forces of the Philippines. Yeah, it was in Plume, Filipino. You were, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. But were, were there, before you're working together in the cabinet of Mrs. Aquino, were there any interactions before that? Did you, did you get to meet each no, other? No, no. no not, not, not at Zero. all, except no. um, tangentially. Uh, my first cousin, General Ismael Villarreal, mm. was with him in Filcag in Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam. Yeah, so oh. they were there together. Mm -hmm. And when uh, FVR and Johnny Ponce and Rile were holed up in Krame, Krame. and uh, Cardinal Sin had called for people power, mm -hmm. my cousin called me and said, because he knew that I was one of the leaders of the cause-oriented groups, mm -hmm. and that you know, we were the parliamentar parliamentarians of the street. Of the street, yeah. He called and said, "Can you please help FVR? <laughs> help, help my boss, FVR. Oh, okay. You know, uh, bring as many people as you can." So literally, warm bodies. Warm bodies, oh, yes. Warm, oh, yeah, warm bodies. Okay. So, so can you imagine mm -hmm. my general? Well, he was Colonel, I think then, Colonel Villarreal, mm -hmm. uh, asking my help. We, we were on opposite sides of the pole because he was with Metrocom and mm -hmm. uh, all sorts the, the, the of the you know, that machinery, with, that yeah, oh. machinery associated with martial law. Mm -hmm. So we were always clashing. But so was Ramos. Yeah, I know, I know. But, uh, you know, things changed uh, those fateful days of February. So no, I had not um, had any contact with him mm -hmm. other than when we joined the government of mm. Mrs. Aquino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chief of Staff, hindi pa siguro masyadong only when 
specific briefings. But I suppose when he became secretary, doon na naging madalas. Yes, no? correct. And you were, correct. And you would yeah. see each other during the cabinet meetings. And yes, you know, correct. Impressions, now, impressions of the man at that time. Well, um, as a cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. you mean efficient, mm -hmm. uh, no nonsense. Uh, Stiff. <laughs> Stiff would speak his own mind. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, he would speak his own mind at mm -hmm. uh, cabinet meetings. Uh, yeah, not the, the joking FVR that you see today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. very formal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, easy to like because you can oh, really? talk to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can you can discuss things with him. Approachable. Approachable mm -hmm. for me at least. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I have another story. Mm -hmm. So after I left the government, mm. um, being a, the cost-oriented personality that I am, mm -hmm. the kidnappings were very rampant during that time which in impacts fact, again on <laughs> in fact in the first 100 days which i was reviewing because i told you i anchored that for national tv mm -hmm. he mentioned that that you know he said we are going to address uh the kidnappings right. of the filipino chinese especially yes mm -hmm. and there are rogue elements in the police and the, in the military in military mm -hmm. and i promise you that i do something about this mm -hmm. That's a private sector can handle. Oh, oh okay. no, 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 no. This was the hundred days. I was still oh, okay, narrating okay. this, mm -hmm. you know. So, so, so. But after I left, my good friend Teresita Angsi, mm. who was um, in the forefront of helping all of these families mm. of victims, there yes. was our Charlene C, who mm -hmm. was killed. Mm -hmm. She was a high school student mm -hmm. in one of the Chinese schools, and she was kidnapped and she was killed. Mm -hmm. And then a few weeks later, a Filipina this time, not a, not a Filipino Chinese, a Filipina was also kidnapped Demandu. and killed. Mm -hmm. And so she called me and she said, you know, do you want to help me? Mm -hmm. Because I know you're, you know, FBR mm -hmm. and all this. And we need to do something because this is getting out of hand. Yeah. So uh, I said, well, what can we do? He said, well, can we band together, not just the Chinese, but Filipinos mm -hmm. too. So we formed Citizens Action Against Crime, mm -hmm. CAAC. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. always marching in the streets <laughs> against FVR. <laughs> well, not against FVR, but against the fact that these rogue elements mm -hmm. were not being um, were not being addressed. Mm -hmm. No, they were still. I think these were yeah. people in the police and the military who had it's so good you know, in the past, mm -hmm. that they could not accept the fact that things had changed, that things had changed yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that FVR had said it, mm -hmm. that he would address it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was an anti-crime summit because criminality was on the agenda mm -hmm. of FVR mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he had political stability right. as a big yeah. item uh, in his agenda, right? Yeah, right? So there was an anti-crime summit in the PICC in February 16, 1993. And there was a big group of us from the Citizens Action Against Crime outside PICC. <laughs> we were demonstrating. Oh, wow. All the <laughs> FBR and all the top brass. Of and the you had just recently left the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And there I was demonstrating <laughs> against my ex boss. but. Oh. <laughs> what can I do? I mean, you feel passionately about uh, something, mm -hmm. uh, then you do it, right? Yes, that's right. So, um, to my surprise, somebody came out and said, FBR wants you to come in. I said, why? I said, he wants you to address the summit. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I asked my friends, I said, are we going to be there or are we going to be outside demonstrating? I said, well, you know, we have a statement. Why don't you read our statement? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I went in and I read the statement. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about FVR. You know, he's not picon. Mm -hmm. He's not thin-skinned. That He does not 
well, at least with that particular issue with mm -hmm. me, he didn't mm -hmm. take it like personally. Mm -hmm. So it was a very strong statement yes. saying that, you know, your programs will not work if we cannot address peace and order. Peace and order. Yeah, yeah because oh. it's giving the Philippines Perception, a black eye. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Bad reputation. So it was it was a very strong statement. I think even Teddy Benigno wrote about it, I <laughs> <you> remember. <laughs> mm, mm. So, uh, so I read the statement and uh, he took it well and mm. he said, we hear you mm -hmm. and we will do something about this. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And and so after that, I think this. I think it was Rafi Alunan already who was the DILG yeah, yeah, secretary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think already, yeah. Uh, he took citizens' action against crime as a recognized NGO mm -hmm. to help uh, the police. Right, uh, partner organization. Partner organization, because that was FVR style. Also, mm. he uh, co-opted all the. Yeah the um, NGOs, mm. the people's organizations, mm -hmm. and said, okay, I mean, you have your issues, but come, help us. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we did. So, we so, did. So. And it hindi, was... Hindi, ano, no? hindi, hindi, hindi siya takot adversarial. na... Adversarial. Hindi siya takot na to bring in... No, uh, no. Opposing, opposing voices, ano? No, not at all. In fact, I think it was during his term... Uh, no, Mrs. Aquino gave birth to the NGO movement, mm -hmm. no, which she really nurtured. But I think... It was FVR who institutionalized uh, people's organizations and NGOs being part mm -hmm. of government. They sat in the development councils, mm -hmm. in the peace and order mm -hmm. councils. So we were part of the peace and order Advisory council here. Um, council, yes, yeah. Council yeah. So he, he he institutionalized that, mm -hmm. yeah, so which I, I thought was very good. So it it didn't shut us up, yeah, because we were already partners, but. We, we would point out things to, yeah. to uh, the police. Mm -hmm. that, I, I think know. it was what put your put your money where your mouth is. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, but of course, and help us. <laughs> the, the kidnappings continued it was, for, for a while, you know. Yeah, until maybe two thousand. Even mm. today, there is, but it's a different kind of kidnapping. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to Tessie Ang She said it's more the mainland Chinese who are being kidnapped um, for ransom. Target naman ngayon. Uh oh, yes. oh, oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh. But it, it, it lasted a long time. Mm -hmm. Just to show you that um, the remnants of past administrations mm -hmm. really can't die down mm -hmm. that fast. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. no matter how good the person at the top, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It, it really. Mahaba yung, ano, yung, Mahaba, yeah. yung transformational. Yeah. Ano, so that's the other thing I admire about uh, President FER. He, he, I was his secretary of tourism. Then I, I was a cost-oriented person mm -hmm. uh, three months later. And he, he took that mm. and uh, he said, as I promise you, we'll do something about it. Mm -hmm. And come help us. Mm. Yeah. You knew how to roll with the punches? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Brought but, everyone, well, <laughs> and brought guess, everyone into the it's fold. It's also, he was confident. He, he, had, he had that self-confidence that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, these people have issues, and many of them are, are relevant and uh, with reason. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will take it, you know, uh -oh. that's part of governance. Uh -oh. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Yeah. That's that's a good point. Uh, uh, the confidence of a leader. Yes. In spite of the criticism and you know negativism thrown against him, he was still open about taking it, accepting the criticism, and working on it. Yes. Huh? Yes. Not just. Shutting down. <laughs> yes, yes. Because we would have even become more, um, you know, uh, adversarial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Then uh, the last thing that uh, I'd like to say is that um, from the very beginning, FVR was had always had uh, environmental protection and uh, sustainable development mm -hmm. in his agenda mm -hmm. as early as nineteen. 92, mm -hmm. even before the Millennial Development Goals mm -hmm. and the Sustainable Development <coughs> Goals, mm -hmm. he already had that 
mm-hmm. in his uh, program of action. Mm-hmm. And uh, 17 years later, in 2009, mm-hmm. he invited me to join him again. Oh. Uh, he said, I want a series of conferences on the environment mm-hmm. because it is, it is 2009, uh, 17 years after I left the cabinet. Uh, it is such an important issue mm-hmm. which has to be addressed and I want like a nationwide um, discussion of the issue. Oh. So um, he said... Roped you in again. Rope me in again. <laughs> Can you chair this project? Mm-hmm. I said I'd be very honored to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, because it was ecotourism. It's what he, he called it ecomismo. E C O M I S M O, eco It mm-hmm. was eco tourism and eco productivity, mm-hmm. but in the end, it's sustainable mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with tourism as the focus, so we had one major conference here at the RCBC Auditorium, mm-hmm. and then the year after, we traveled to Cebu, Bohol, um, General Santos, Sarangani, Kamsur. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we covered a lot of territory yeah, and yeah. always there was a, a multidisciplinary mm-hmm. group in the audience mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, uh, civil society, <laughs> academe, media, because he wanted as wide a coverage as mm-hmm. possible. And <laughs> Lori Tan, Lorenzo Tan oh, of okay. World Wildlife mm-hmm. Fund, mm-hmm. Um, was one of the main speakers mm-hmm. on climate change. Mm-hmm climate action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You appreciated him for that, no? Broad yung pananaw. Hindi yes. <laughs> hindi makitid. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And, mm. uh, and and the follow through 17 years after. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Hindi nakalimot. In the first 100 days, he had already mentioned that environmental protection was big on his li- list. Mm-hmm. And he also um, enjoined um, cost-oriented and uh, groups and NGOs to help protect the environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that follow through 17 y- li- years later is admirable. That he, he, it was not just lip service, <laughs> but it was something he really believed in, <laughs> you know? Oh, that he would, yeah, he would go back and read uh, what uh, or ask for the series of conferences yes uh, yes and very well attended there mm-hmm. would have been about per conference between 50 to 100 people oh, stakeholders lot Celeste was the project director of that one oh, I think. Okay. but the three ladies oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we traveled okay. together okay. to oh. so many places mm. and uh, yeah, I'm sure it's all documented. Yeah, uh, yes, yes, uh, somewhere. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't really, you know, I mean, officially, it was three months in his administration, but it's actually, <laughs> it's probably ongoing <laughs> 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 to this day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. But right. but tell me about life in the cabinet when you were officially in the cabinet. I mean, it was a very diverse group of individuals I remember coming from, I mean, not exactly, I, I mean, you were, you know, you were, you were hold over, you were asked to stay yes, on. Yes, right. Uh, Secretary Flavio, for example, total unknown, but when you look at it, an expert recognized uh, fellow in his specific field. Shell Habito pulled out from the <laughs> comforts of uh, Los Baños. <laughs> of Los Baños, diba? brought the Ernesto Ernie Garilao, ganun din. I mean, diba? Yes. And then <clears throat> the likes of Bobby Romulo. Yes. Uh, Bobby Dio, uh, no, uh, Boy Blue, Del Rosario. Yes. And then Roy Navarro. Yes. CEOs. Yes. Diba? Right, I mean, right. Tell me, t- how, how did he manage such a, I mean, the first place, how did he pick those people? <laughs> oh, there was a search committee. Oh. There, well, I, I told you, there was a search committee. Some of them he didn't know. Yes, no? correct. There was a search committee. That's why I told you that mm-hmm. the person that had been identified mm-hmm. for tourism after vetting mm-hmm. didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So last minute, oh. I had to come in. I had to 
be asked to remain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some he didn't know because he wanted the best and the brightest, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Broad nung ano, no? actually. Yes. Ang, ang yeah. broad nung net. Eh. Uh, well, um, cabinet meetings. My husband was one of two males mm -hmm. in Mrs. Ramos's <laughs> circle. Spouses foundation. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, the other one was Nieves Confessor's husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so oh. they would sometimes go, <laughs> you know, they were good sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they would sit with the ladies. And uh, to this day, um, they would have a giggle about that. <laughs> but um, Mrs. Ramos, in the meantime, had put up Katutubong Filipino mm. Foundation. Mm. And I was asked to be on the board. Oh. Yeah. So I sat on that board for a long time uh, with Batiste Soro and yeah. and then um, there was uh, an exhibit in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, we exhibited our oh, yeah. arts right. and crafts. Yes. I think that must have been 1995. I, I, I'm not sure now, mm -hmm. but it was mm -hmm. a very successful yes, yes, uh, exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the other thing about President Ramos. I mean, of course, it was Tita Ming's uh, project, but he also truly believed that on the soft side, mm -hmm. being a military man, you think it would only be the, you know. <laughs> oh, no, the, the, the public knew that, that that was the image, you know, stiff, straight, very dry. Yeah. But exactly as you pointed out, the, the, there's a soft side. The soft side, he, he appreciated that and he encouraged it. <laughs> And so to showcase um, the Philippines, mm -hmm. what the, the, the riches that we have in mm -hmm. our heritage. The, the, uh -huh. the culture, the heritage. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Which uh, was all about the centennial, <laughs> naman, <laughs> if you remember. Yes. <laughs> Celebrating the. Yeah. Uh, I was reviewing the 100 days report, mm -hmm. and in the end, his main message was we have to have civic commitment meaning all of us have to do our share mm -hmm. to make this work because mm -hmm. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess other presidents have said it, but, but that, you know, we all have to work together. But he, he's the only one who I think who said civic commitment is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about the work style. You did mention part of it uh, earlier. I mean, this guy was driven, right? My God, you get calls at 5 a.m. <laughs> really? You got those calls? Oh, yeah. Too? Also, you know, some negative thing in the newspaper about this and that. I don't recall anymore, but mm. uh, yeah, he mm. would already, he had already encircled something in the newspaper at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and uh, you, mean, uh, you mean the marginal notes? He would send yeah, you. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, yeah. He would take note of a negative thing or something, mm -hmm. yeah, and and uh, he'd say, uh, "What happened here?" You know, and you you have to know how to explain. Didn't that worry you? I mean, <laughs> this guy uh, was I, I'm used to discipline, you know. So you, you, I'm an you A-type personality. So <laughs> you know, I. But th there are things that come from left field that you yeah. you don't expect mm, you know, mm, you know. Mm. but that didn't happen very often it happened more to other secretaries mm -hmm. than, than me mm -hmm. but I, I had a few of that everyone had this fair share <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. and so complete staff work you know how, how it is mm -hmm. with him you, know, you can't go to a cabinet meeting without being ready because if he asks you a question and you cannot answer you'll really be very embarrassed yeah, you have to do your homework. Yeah. So mahirap sagutin na I, I'm not familiar with it. Yung ganon. No. Or I don't know. He will not take that for an answer. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sense, he was strict. But did he ball out people? Yes. Oh. Yes, he did. I will not mention names. In the confines of the cabinet meeting, of course. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, but I had been used to cabinet meetings because during President Cory's time, my my first boss Tony Gonzalez mm. was always abroad promoting the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I would always be the one assigned I to attend oh, cabinet oh, meetings. Okay. So I yeah, was right, familiar right. with with the style there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But with him, it was um, stringent. 
it was demanding mm -hmm. because before the cabinet meeting you had to really read up mm -hmm. not just on your subject uh, mm -hmm. not just on tourism but other things because everything you know um, are things are interrelated mm -hmm. you're not just in a silo uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you uh, yeah to yeah him it was all there's part convergence of a, yeah oh, there's convergence you're part of a larger whole no? yes mm -hmm. yeah so uh, he he was uh, demanding that way mm -hmm. but uh, good mm -hmm. it, it mm -hmm. gave us a sense of discipline and hard work that mm -hmm. you need as a public servant <laughs> no? oh, oh and that uh, one comment actually was that he was able to get such a monolithic structure called the civil service <laughs> to work and to move you know, yes. at his command. <laughs> yes, yeah, because, correct, correct. Because during Cory's time, we had to dismantle all the Marcos apparatus, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I remember after going to DOT the first time, I cried for three weeks. <laughs> it was just so overwhelming, mm -hmm. the apparatus, it was full of Ilocanos. Mm -hmm. I have nothing against Ilocanos, okay? But I mean, it was full of people from La Union, of mm -hmm. Aspiras. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what they were doing there. Mm -hmm. There were gardeners on the payroll. There were... It was just overwhelming. And I'm sure every new secretary at the time mm -hmm. had the same problem of how do you dismantle the apparatus of the dictatorship mm -hmm. and putting in new blood mm -hmm. and you know you want to introduce professionalism yeah, etc yeah. mm -hmm. well thank goodness mrs aquino survived that and you know it was a transition government mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and then fvr mm -hmm. made it work mm -hmm. but it had already been a considerably trimmed down mm -hmm. bureaucracy mm -hmm. Because I remember Louis Villafuerte was the head of the reorganization. Yes, yeah, yes. It yes. was a terrible, terrible time when we had to let go of so many people. Mm -hmm. We were taken to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Some people were, that we, we, we fired got reinstated. Mm -hmm. We had to pay back, we, mm -hmm. <laughs> back wages. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was very challenging. Mm -hmm. But during FVR's time, there's a period of... of stability mm -hmm. after the tumultuous six years of Mrs. Aquino mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there was stability mm -hmm. that's why investment started pouring in yeah. and he yeah. was indef indefatigable he was tireless mm -hmm. in in going abroad and giving the message that the Philippines mm -hmm. was open for business yeah. And, yeah. And, and investments yeah. did yeah. start coming in yeah. and he did referred to himself quite often during these visits overseas as the country's number one salesman. Yes, he was. He was. <laughs> and I know he even directed Bobby Romulo, because I was quite close to Bobby, mm -hmm. uh, because of ASEAN. Mm -hmm. I was quite active in ASEAN. Um, to transform our embassies abroad, um, to gear more towards economic diplomacy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aside from taking care of our OFWs, mm -hmm. it was really more economic and cultural mm -hmm. diplomacy. So mm -hmm. there was a reorientation. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a direct order to Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to Reconfigure the, it. For mm -hmm. the yeah, transformation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, as I said, everything had to be synchronized in his programs. No? Mm -hmm. If he says something, the implementation, the implementing agencies had to... Uh, be in convergence mm -hmm. with his policy mm -hmm. statements, and he would follow up. <laughs> and he would, and he would follow up. <laughs> yun actually, yun yung ano eh. <laughs> yeah, and if there were any reports yeah. that some embassy abroad was this and that, mm -hmm. it it would get to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Okay. Uh, may I also find out if did you also help him during his campaign? No, because I was um, 
an official of the go- I was uh, secret secretary uh, okay, at the time, okay, okay. so there was a prohibition. Mm-hmm. But of course, we were, we supported. But Mrs. Aquino, didn't she task a few <laughs> yes. secretaries to help him out? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. was an implicit, oh, uh, yes. But, you know, we couldn't be criticized mm-hmm. for openly campaigning because we mm-hmm. were in this bureaucracy, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it was an unspoken thing, that mm-hmm. full support for she for FDR. Did you have a participation in getting her to endorse FDR? Did, no, I don't think I'm so. Not. Okay. No, okay. But, but, but we all felt there was no choice, no? Talaga? So it wasn't uh, we, unexpected when I'm you... I'm in Ilonga, but I didn't support Miriam. <laughs> we needed a steady eddy. Talaga? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I think so. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so not no. It wasn't ex- unexpected when you know word was going around that he was going to make a run for it. No, no. For the no, presidency. it wasn't unexpected. Uh, were yeah. you ribbing him about it? <laughs> no, I was not in the ribbing stage with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, but I knew about that campaign because. My friends Peter Garucho, Rafi mm. Alunan, mm. Mm. Uh, were there in the. Secretary Alunan eventually became spokesperson diba, for the campaign. Yes, mm. correct. And one of the managers actually of the campaign. Yes, mm. yes, yeah. So, yeah. I knew what what was going on in that shop. <laughs> oh, okay. With Rene Villa and all those people, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Who were, yeah, helping him out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. After he, oh, what? Wait, six years. And you, you mentioned ASEAN. I was going to ask you also about APEC and uh, having shared with us your story about him keeping you in the loop, you know, albeit yes. as a private sector representative. Yeah. Did you? Did he bring you in as well into the ASEAN summits and APEC? No, not APEC, but BIMP IAGA, the Brunei, oh, okay. Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, mm-hmm. East ASEAN mm-hmm. growth area. Mm-hmm. And one thing again about the FDR, matching words with action. Uh, after he proposed the formation of BIMP IAGA, he flew in from Manado, Indonesia, direct to Davao. Right. Mm-hmm. To demonstrate that yes, mm-hmm. there could be direct flights mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. air connections, yes. which is what I had been mm. saying all along, mm. you know, mm. and so he said, and then he said, "Oh, kita mo, ginawa ko yung sinabi mo," <laughs> you know. He he, he 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 would already joke that way. Okay. I already said what I, I already did what you said. Mm-hmm. I flew direct just to make the point mm-hmm. that you've been making. Mm-hmm. And at that time, he was close to Mahathir, to Prime Minister Mahathir, mm-hmm. and he brought in um, an investor from mm. Malaysia mm. to do the uh, resort in Samal Island, oh, yeah. which in the tourism master plan was um, identified as a priority mm-hmm. area for development. Mm-hmm. Nobody had heard about Samal Island before mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. TMP singled it out. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Tan Sri Datuk Ting put his money there in Samal. It was a huge investment, again, to make to, to point out that the BIMP Iaga concept was working. Mm-hmm. You know, that mm-hmm. investments among the, the four countries, but that part of the world, no? Mindanao, mm-hmm. uh, Borneo, Sulawesi, yeah, uh, could happen. And I was again out of the cabinet and I'm already consulting mm, then. Mm. And Tan Sri Datu Ting was our client and it had agrarian reform issues. Oh. The area that he had uh, Samal. in Samal. Mm, mm. But because I knew Ernie Garilao and you know, I had worked with the people in the cabinet, Paul Dominguez, mm. etc. And FVR's directive make that Samal Island thing work, mm. you know. Um, yeah, so it was still there, <laughs> but mm. on the other side, mm. Mm. yeah. So, oh, okay. Okay. and he, he really pushed that BIMP-IAGA mm-hmm. uh, concept. Mm-hmm. 
I, I like it's still it's still alive it's still, to this yeah, day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I I was on that I was on that trip actually from Manado to Davao. Oh, I see. No, okay. No, but not the commercial. I was on board the C one thirty. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing that I liked about him describing the use of words. Actually, you know, uh, how just a minor change can totally change the perspective from southern back door back door being derogatory and all yeah to southern gateway yes diba? gateway being positive Entry. affirmative yeah, yeah. Diba? Uh -huh. nothing <laughs> yes no? nothing, yes. Nothing, nothing bad about it and Ever since then, he would refer to it as, you know, this is our southern gateway. Gateway na hindi na back door. Yes. Kasi nga, illegal pagka gina back door. Yes, yes. It was the escape hatch before, yeah. you know, all the or, dissidents. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or you'd like to smuggle something in. Yung nga, you know, yeah. associated with something illegal or Right. Illicit. And I think FVR has to be credited for really opening up Mindanao. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where people were afraid, he said, we, we should open it up. Mm -hmm. I've totally changed, you know? Yeah, right, the, the outlook, you know, of, of, exactly. of Mindanao. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Ikaw ba kasama ka dun sa mga, ano, dun sa mga out-of-town cabinet yes. meetings? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. that, that, that short time you were yes. in, in the cabinet. Yes. <laughs> Tell he, me about he, those. <laughs> Well, there were big productions <laughs> because, you know, you had to bring the whole cabinet there, plus mm -hmm. you get the venue ready and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. I was not part of that, of course, but uh, our regional directors had to be ready also yeah. in case they were asked mm -hmm. questions about their exactly. region and mm -hmm. province. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. hectic, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, again, the first 100 days, um, he said that during the time, the first 100 days, he had visited all but three of the administrative regions in the Philippines. Can yeah, you imagine right. what kind of work that entailed? That's a he traveled very all the time. Punishing schedule. Because he wanted to see what was happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was very hands on. Mm -hmm. I guess the other thing was he wanted to carry the message that. He was uh, elected with a plurality, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm the president. Yes. It's not of just one group, but of everyone. Yes, huh? yes. Yeah. And he also said during that um, um, speech of the 100 days that for the first time in our history, we elected not only a president and a vice president, but a whole Congress. Mm -hmm. Senate and lower house, oh, yeah, no? synchronized and way. all local governments up to the municipal level, for the first time mm -hmm. since, uh, I, I guess, how many years? Mm -hmm. Fifty years. No. Oh. Can you imagine what kind of uh, machinery mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. what that entailed? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and then to make that work That's after right. all the tumultuous years of. Ms. Aquino, which I said was really a transition government. So, yeah, right so it, it took a military man to... Right man, the right time? I think so. The right person at the right time? Oh, definitely. Uh, there is no question. Talaga. We were very fortunate to have those very halcyon, peaceful years. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you also, the, the, the peace ingredient... Uh, from your perspective, for example, the tourism, you mentioned the peace and order problem brought about by uh, the kidnappings. Yeah. But the general impression, for example, the secessionists in the South, the NPA. Well, the, he recognized the, the communists. Uh, he, the RAM. Guys. Yeah. Signed agreements eventually with two of the three threat groups, you know? Signed the peace agreement with Ram, signed the peace agreement with the MNLF. And then he uh, legalized the Communist Party of the Philippines. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. they were legal. <laughs> yes, yes. 
I thought that was a, a very significant thing, that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They were no longer underground, but not no longer a terrorist group. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because political, st he knew that economic growth would not come without political stability. So mm -hmm. he had to address that. And I guess personally, being mm -hmm. an, a military man, mm -hmm. he felt it was incumbent on him to mm -hmm. really show uh, effects mm -hmm. on that part. Mm -hmm. And lead by example. I mean, I know exactly what you guys are thinking. You know? <laughs> Dun sa, sa yes. militar, no? yes. to command yes. of war. Yes. To go for peace. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you've stayed connected over the years? Yes, yes. Uh, I got invited to uh, birthdays and uh, Christmas <laughs> parties. Oh, and, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, book launchings. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. what's, the, what's, the, what's the Quentuhan like when you do meet? <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> Last time I came here with a group of former senior government officials, okay. <laughs> we asked him, why did you endorse Tutek? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. We didn't <laughs> blame him. Mm -mm. We, we just said, please come out and say that, you know, this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you think he's still very much involved in... No, I, 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 mm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not privy to it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, after the first 100 days when he already saw mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it, it was tottering, mm -hmm. uh, he made some statements. Yes. And so I told my colleagues in the former senior government officials, let's go and talk to him. Maybe he, he'll have a change mm -hmm. of heart now and, you know. Mm -hmm. Because he said the boat was sinking and all that, no. So I came with Karina David, rest her soul, mm. uh, Ging Delis, no. Bertie Lim, who else were? Two others, I think. And then we came with some people from CEPI, the electronics organization. Oh, okay. They were really suffering already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of this pivot to China and mm. then, you know. So we were all here, we were talking, and here in this room. Mm -hmm. And he didn't commit, and he was just joking the whole time. Mm -mm. But he got the message. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> now, I've said my subversive thing already. Okay. Sige, sige, sige. Towards the latter part of the interview, I generally ask uh, the interviewee, yeah, what, what was it that FBR was able to achieve for the Philippines? But I think you've already said that, you know? Yes. That he broke the... Yeah, that he broke the monopoly in the at least in the airline industry that and telecoms oh, and two. telecoms, you know, yeah. two big mm -hmm. industries. Well, he generally broke up the cartels, every, the, the cartels, <laughs> cartels and the cartels, monopolies. Honey. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that the FBR legacy? For me, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's a, a small part of it, mm -hmm. but an important mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, he brought the country together mm -hmm. uh, for six years. We had peace, mm -hmm. we had stability, uh, there was confidence, uh, uh, international confidence mm -hmm. in us. That's why investments and tourism mm -hmm. uh, grew mm -hmm. during the time, trade investments and tourism. Uh, as I said, he was tireless in promoting the Philippines. No? We had a good name in the mm -hmm. international community. Mm -hmm. We had self-respect. Mm -hmm. We could be proud of ourselves. I think that was a very important mm -hmm. contribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th those were six memorable years. Mm -hmm. What is it that you would want people to remember of him? Or you na yun? You na yun, siguro. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay. that he led the country, he, he, he was a leader, mm -hmm. and uh, he brought peace and stability to the country which we needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meron ka bang ano? Special memory? <laughs> Special memory? Yeah. 
special memory of FVR. Yeah. Um, I think with all the, um, you know, military demeanor and all that, the the soft spot, you know, he uh, he he really is quite an affectionate person. Mm. You know, if you know him well, mm. you mm. stick around him long mm. enough. Mm. Mm. Yeah, he has that soft spot in him which mm. people would not normally associate <laughs> him with. Mm. You know, and so those those three questions, he th- those things that he asked me. Oh, I make three wishes and I'll grant them. Mm-hmm. I think that's really very, very special. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. when you, I guess, when you discover that soft spot in him, you know, that just endears him to you. Right? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. really, very mm-hmm. endearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was a short stint. If you were given a second chance, <laughs> would you have gone the full? <laughs> No, because, um, <laughs> because of the circumstances that I found myself in with mm. my husband, oh, okay. you know. Mm. So, and I really think I'm more meant for the private sector. Mm-hmm. I'm more effective, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. uh, working from the outside, mm-hmm. espousing my causes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> but he didn't keep you too far away, really. No? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you so always, uh, you know, I didn't have to. You can help the country by not being in a position of power. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it can be a snake pit also. And <laughs> who, need, who needs that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so so um, yeah. I think I think it was a good s- short stint. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes.